What up y'all, this is Patrick Hayes and I'm coming to you casual today because honestly, I think I make better videos. At least it comes out better when I'm just kind of in the flow like this. But um, what I wanna talk about today is an interesting thing. I've, um, I've come up with a metaphor that I find quite funny and quite interesting regarding the idea of resisting life and how to stop resisting life and how to let go into the flow of the orgasmic river of life and how life is really like an orgasmic river that when you let yourself flow with the orgasmic river then your life becomes more like a perpetual orgasm it has the capacity to be that if you can relax into your natural flow and so what I want to get to in this video is what your natural flow is how to identify that and some of the ways that we can sync up with the natural flow of creation so that we can find our natural flow, we can stop resisting life, start trusting life, and start letting go into the orgasmic flow. So, first off, let me explain a little bit about what I mean by the orgasmic river of life. So, really simply, the metaphor I'm using here is that life is like an orgasmic river. All of creation comes from the connection between masculine and feminine, the connection between yin and yang, the divine union. This divine union is, I'd say, most highly exemplified through the expression of orgasm. Orgasm is the connection between the masculine and the feminine. It is the connection between yin and yang. And it really is at the core of all creation. We know that None of us would be here if it wasn't for orgasm. Orgasm is what generates life. And the connection between masculine and feminine and the orgasm that seeds the womb is what gives birth to every single human that exists on this planet. So, the nature of creation is an orgasmic expression. And this is something that I think, when this is understood deeply, is extremely profound. Because what we realize here is that our natural nature, our, the nature of our truest expression, is one of orgasm. And when we can come into balance, there's a cop I'm passing here. I gotta put this down. When we come into balance, when we are in balance in our yin and yang, when our masculine and feminine is balanced, we are at that connection point, at that creation point, which is, in a sense, orgasm. So. If we can find how to ride that wave, to ride that slipstream of perpetual orgasm by being in a non-resistive state to our truest expression, then we walk that balance point between masculine and feminine. We walk that balance point between yin and yang, and our life is experienced more like a perpetual orgasm than the stuck state that we might find ourselves in, frustration, lack, suffering, or being blocked. So. If you think about orgasm, what happens when you resist an orgasm? Well, when a man resists an orgasm, we call it blue balls. And it is quite painful and uh, it doesn't feel good. We feel blocked because our energy is not flowing naturally. What happens when a woman resists orgasm? Well, I don't know if we have a particular name for it. We could call it hot and bothered maybe. So a woman's hot and bothered. Same situation, resisting the orgasm, resisting the flow is painful, it's suffering. It's like instead of being on that river raft down the river, it's like hitting the river bank and not flowing anymore. We're, we're out of the slipstream, we're out of the flow of creation. So how do we surf that flow of creation and stay in the flow? Well, part of that is learning what our natural flow is. So we all have our own natural flows and our natural flow is something that only really we can figure out what our um, emotional wave is like, what, what kind of uh, states we get into, what kind of paces are best for us. So it gets confusing because trying to identify what your natural flow is, is difficult from within the system of media and business and the world doing business as usual. Because the pace of the world is so erratic and unhealthy and unstable that Many of us lose contact with what our natural flow is. 
and we can't find our natural flow because we have all these demands of the physical world, of the business world, of just paying the rent and running in a hamster wheel that we have to keep up with. So it's really hard to get in sync with what our true nature is. So one of the best ways of being able to identify what that is, is actually getting in touch with nature. Because at the core of nature, you can say the nature of nature is to support us in our natural flow. That is our nature. That's why we call it nature. That's why nature and personal nature have the same term for it. Because our nature is in sync with nature. So one of the ways that we can find what our natural flow is, is getting back, going back to nature and getting in tune with the rhythms of nature. And this is something that you'll find that if you're able to get in tune with the rhythm of nature and trust that, that everything will start to move more smoothly. Your resistance will start to dissolve and you will be able to start moving into that orgasmic slipstream that is your birthright. So let's think about this. What are the cycles of nature that give us our rhythms? We could speak in biological terms right now. We could say that the sun cycle and the moon cycle and the four seasons are really, really powerful cycles that affect our consciousness. So the sun cycle, this has to do with our circadian rhythms. This affects our circadian rhythms. This affects our ability to sleep deeply and get good regenerative sleep. If we're out of sync with the sun cycles, we're not going to be getting good sleep and we are going to therefore not regenerate properly and not be able to be as focused, be as motivated, feel as good, and the list goes on, right? So respecting that and honoring that is a great way to learn how to be more in sync with our true nature. So one thing that I do on a regular basis is I wake up early and I use the, the energy of the rising sun as an energetic uh, boost. And what I found is it's a very interesting thing is that take a task that takes three hours. If I do that task from 6 to 9 a.m. as the sun is rising versus doing that task from like 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., while the sun is going down, my energy levels are completely different. And this has nothing to do with how recently I woke up because I could, if I slept in and woke up at 12.30, or sorry, if I woke up at 2.30 and then did this three hour task from three to six, I would be much more, and I've done this, I'm much more tired after that three hour task than I would be if I woke up at 5.30 did it from six to nine. And part of that is because when the sun is rising, it's a yang energy and you can coast off that. It's kind of like catching the current. If you were sailing a sailboat out in the ocean, you can catch the current that's taking you from point A to point B, or you could swim against the current. So the idea is to find what are the currents in the reality that we can use for our benefit. So the sun cycles, the moon cycles, astrological cycles, the seasons. One winter, I was raw vegan during the winter while it was freezing cold. My body temperature lowered. I was like, it it ruined me because it was cold. I should have been eating warm foods, not just raw foods that are cold. And so learning how to work with the seasons in your favor is a great way of getting back in sync with your natural rhythm. And the the tone of the natural rhythm, again, is set by the greater uh, celestial bodies and it's set by the seasons on the planet. So this is a great way to be able to tune into what your natural flow is. Another thing to really be aware of is just what's going on with you as far as your natural ebb and flow. Everybody's got their own ebbs and flows. One biological ebb and flow that every woman has is their moon cycle. So it's not a great idea to go exercise when you're on a heavy bleeding day. So that's obviously something that um, anybody with a little bit of sense would realize and learn how to to be more in balance with. So a lot of being able to find your true orgasmic expression is being able to figure out what your natural flow is and how to express that natural flow. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what the natural flow is because we've been so conditioned to hustle, 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 and be the hamster on the hamster wheel trying to just keep up with our daily bills. But one of the magical things that happens when we start trusting in life and trusting in the natural cycles and trusting in our natural flow, trusting in nature and trusting in our own natural pace is that when we do that, 
we can actually do way more with less. We can put less effort in and get way more. Because to be honest, if we're always going against the grain and trying to keep up with this unnatural rhythm that is perpetuated in society and is pushed onto us, then oftentimes we can put so much effort into something and the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's way more effort than it's actually worth at the end. So how do we figure out how to break out of that? Well, the key is getting back in tune with nature. So going out and feeling what that rhythm is. Start dancing with the rhythm of nature and getting in sync with the different cycles. So you can look up and you could Google sun cycles, moon cycles, astrological cycles. You can look all that stuff up. Circadian rhythms. There's all sorts of different things. Your brain waves stitch your brain waves change into different brain wave states at different times of the day. Theta is great for subliminal reprogramming. So right as you're going to sleep at night is a great time to reprogram your subliminal mind. So there's so many different things, subconscious mind. So there's so many different things that we can do that are in sync with our natural rhythms that's gonna make things a lot easier and it's like catching the slipstream current when we're on our sailboat as opposed to trying to swim against the current. Now one of the major blocks that prevents people from being able to do this is that somewhere deep inside of them, they don't actually trust life and they don't actually trust nature and they don't trust their own pace. So it's one thing to be able to start exploring and getting in touch with what your natural pace is. But then it's a different thing to really trust that because a lot of people have the experience that they can go into nature and they can feel amazing and they feel the truth in that moment. But still, how do they make the decision to actually trust that to the point that they can say no in the moment where it doesn't feel right, that now is not the time to work, that now is the time to regenerate, that potentially now is the time instead of trying to push, push, push to hit a deadline to say, you know what, this deadline isn't correct for me. Or, you know what, I know that I will be, I will do more by not stressing about something and doing something out of anxiety to get it done, by, but by actually resting and letting that go and coming back to it in the right time. And in order to do this, it can feel scary because it feels like, oh no, this isn't gonna happen correctly. This isn't gonna be done right if I don't do it right now, if I don't keep up with this crazy pace. But what you'll actually notice if you start exploring this and actually just trusting and going with the flow of what actually feels right to you is that if you do that, then when you do go back to do the work, it will be much more in the flow because you're going with the natural flow of things. And you know, it's a difficult thing to do when you work on somebody else's clock, it is. But the more you give yourself permission to go and explore nature, to explore what that feels like and get in tune with what that rhythm is, the more you can make your decisions from that rhythm and the more naturally you will be able to break away from the, the restrictive constructs in your life that you've set up from an anxiety state. And naturally, you'll start to create different constructs that give you the freedom to relax and go more with the flow. So I'm not saying to go against all of your greatest fears and just like jump off the cliff and quit your job and run away from all that. But what I am saying is really start exploring the natural flow of nature and your natural expression and your natural pace. Start feeling into yourself. Feel before you think. Start feeling into the natural pace of what feels good to you and figure out how to do the things that you need to do in your life from that pace. And when you're able to do that, you'll realize that you get way more done with way m much less effort and things are done in a better way. It's just more eloquent, it's more flowing, it's more fluid. And then naturally from doing things that way, you start getting ideas and inspirations to start shifting your life to support that more and more and more. And realize that nature has your back in this. Nature's there to show you the rhythms. And if you work with nature, if you work with the natural intuition that you have inside of you of this feels good, this feels regenerative, this feels very relaxing, this feels flowing, when you trust in that and you go with it, it takes care of you. So you can trust nature, you can trust life, and you can trust your intuition and what feels good inside of you to be your guide 
for the pace and the rhythms in which you express yourself and you do the things that you need to do in life. And this is profoundly transformative. So I challenge you to give this a try, to go ahead and Google the different natural cycles and start doing things to bring you in sync with those cycles. Every single night I go and watch the sunset. It totally helps me blow off any steam from the day, completely relax and honestly, the sunset is a cosmic guru that teaches people how to calm down and come into a balanced state. Hands down 100%, that's why I do it every night and it's been one of the most profound practices I've ever done in my life. But tuning into these natural cycles, doing things like this, exploring it, I challenge you to do this and see how much it shifts your life. Start trusting in what feels right to you, the rhythms that feel right, and be willing to be flexible enough to get out of your mind and feel first before you think. Feel your way into your decisions and don't get stuck on a rigid idea of what needs to be done within your calendar. I won't even get into how the Gregorian calendar has been skewed in order to people to take people out of natural time. That's a whole different story. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying here is get back into natural time. Honor your natural rhythms and get in tune with your natural rhythms by getting in tune with the rhythms of nature. And as you tune into these natural cycles, you will start tuning in to that natural orgasmic flow within you. You will stop resisting the orgasm and you will start embodying the orgasm as your everyday expression and your life will become more orgasmic. It will become more rewarding and you will find that slipstream of synchronicity that honors your true nature to live in the balance point between masculine and feminine, the yin and the yang, finding that creation point, cosmic nectar zone that delivers you into the everlasting orgasm of the cosmic life in the web of existence. Beauty has been found. I challenge you, I challenge you to explore these natural rhythms and please share your experiences in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, and share with your friends, and I'll talk to you next time. One love.